lesson on this Falcon 2000 uh, EX uh, Easy uh, System series. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the hydraulic system. The uh, hydraulic system in uh, Falcon 2000 EX Easy is a fairly simple system, and uh, it operates several uh, several uh, independent systems. Uh, 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 correction independent components of the aircraft so uh, it's j mostly uh, it is uh, automatic and hardly any controls in the cockpit it's it's one of the set and forget type that is after initialization of uh, the standby pump which is set to auto almost no action is required from the uh, crew end as long as uh, everything is going in fine. So let's get on to the uh, lesson. Okay, as usual, uh, the commit to memory items or the system limitations. Only hydraulic uh, fluid conforming to AIR3520 or MIL Hotel 5606 specification must be used. The green range of the main system uh, is indicated when the pressure is between uh, 3000 plus minus 200 psi. The standby pump auto mode uh, when it is cycling, uh, when the number 2 pump pressure drops to 1650 plus minus 100 psi and cycling between 2300 plus minus 100 uh, psi. Uh, up to 2300 plus minus 100 psi the hydraulic one reservoir capacity is 1.95 us gallons or 7.4 liters and hydraulic two reservoir is 1.58 us gallons or 6 liters uh, these all are uh, commit to memory items and i don't have to re-emphasize as I told you, uh, the hydraulic uh, system operates several uh, services and uh, subsystems. There are two independent systems that is hydraulic 1 and hydraulic 2. And it is serviced by three engine driven pumps <coughs> and one electrically driven standby pump. And uh, the entire operation is fully automatic and uh, once the standby pump is set to auto position as I mentioned earlier and there are hardly any um, controls in the cockpit so everything happens automatic and the indications to the, uh, uh, the pilot on the synoptic uh, hydraulic page is very very clear so uh, it's, it's almost in my experience it's a very reliable system so uh, you will never have to face any problem okay let's go through the system and its uh, components in a little bit of more uh, detail each uh, system uh, has its own reservoirs uh, as we saw earlier and uh, they are pressurized by bleed air system which the same uh, a tapping which we use for fuel system that is to pressurize the fuel uh, tanks the same air is being used of course it is independent of any of the other uh, pneumatic uh, system feeds capacity of hydraulic uh, one tank is 7.4 liters and hydraulic two tank is 6 liters and uh, the system one has got two engine driven pumps that is engine one pump and the engine two pump and system two has got only one engine driven pump that is engine two pumps it's the schematic may be a little bit confusing so there are two pumps attached to engine uh, uh, two uh, and uh, engine one has got uh, one pump and uh, and the standby pump is electrically driven it's an electrically driven pump and it's automatically activated if hydraulic uh, uh, system 2 pressure 
drops below 1650 uh, plus minus 100 uh, psi and of course it uh, operates up to 2300 plus minus 100 psi. Let us uh, well, let me briefly describe uh, the location of uh, various components of the hydraulic system so that you will get an idea. Of course, uh, uh, these would be very clear physically when you have look at it once or uh, twice. Uh, nevertheless, we will go through the um, location of each of the components. Okay, uh, uh, as we will go see uh, the hydraulic pumps uh, as you can see fitted on the uh, both the engines two uh, uh, on number two engine and one on number one engine. Uh, engine driven pumps and uh, further left is the parking brake accumulator, the circuit brake panel uh, in the cockpit and overhead on the overhead panel. Of course, the instrument panel where the uh, synoptic uh, hydraulic page whereby uh, the figures and the system working is monitored by the pilot. The hydraulic re reservoirs are located in the aft uh, ser servicing compartment and the standby pump also is located there and there is also a selector valve which about which we are going to uh, discuss uh, in a little bit uh, detail and of course the accumulators are also located there. And the ground servicing connector that means for any ground servicing there is a uh, connector uh, so that you don't have to activate the engine uh, pumps and all for any uh, uh, hydraulic component servicing. So that's also shown here. So uh, uh, this is generally the layout of all the components of the hydraulic system. I uh, put this picture so that it will be more clear to you. This is uh, the reservoirs as I told you it is located in the aft uh, servicing compartment. This aft servicing compartment is a very narrow and a very uh, small uh, uh, compartment. You just have to slide up and you will be able to spot these two hydraulic tanks uh, very easily. And also there will be, there is a side uh, glass within the uh, tank um, uh, so that you can check the uh, fluid level uh, before the flight. So that is one of the requirements of on a pre-flight check which I am sure uh, you will get familiar within uh, the first or second flight. Let us go further. Firstly the engine driven pumps. Uh, these are all self regulating and pressure is regulated bit, uh, at uh, 3000 plus minus 200 psi and it is a pump type uh, uh, pump which builds up the pressure and it is located in the accessory gearbox and of course there are no controls in the cockpit uh, uh, to control uh, this. Here I put another picture of a typical pump type uh, uh, pump type uh, pumps, hydraulic pumps. Of course there are other types such as centrifugal pumps etc. In this uh, aircraft, it is pump type that uh, you can see uh, uh, the yellow portion, it uh, it is it's a rocking motion which is giving uh, pumping action and uh, hydraulic pressure is built and which is uh, shown in red in color. So this is the type of uh, pump which is fitted in this aircraft. Okay, now the uh, uh, standby uh, electrical pump. A standby electrical pump powered by the essential bus bar allows operation of components powered by the number 2 system in case of a failure of the main uh, pump. In the auto mode, there are two modes which we will see. In the auto mode, it is activated automatically as soon as the number 2 system pressure drops below 1650 and it thereafter it cycles what happens is the pressure builds up to 2300 psi then it drops back and it cycles continuously between 
1650 to 2300 psi of course if it is continuing to work at a higher psi that means there is something something wrong some uh, so the pilot uh, needs to be aware of that anyway these uh, procedures we will see in the normal and abnormal actions uh, the standby electrical pump may also be used on ground only to pressurize the number one system for maintenance checks now uh, you you may well appreciate that since the number two uh, side is being powered by this uh, standby electrical pump on ground it can be used to generally operate the services uh, operated by number two system but it can also be used to operate uh, subsystems in number one system provided there is a ground mechanical selector which is located in the aft servicing compartment. Uh, so that has to be opened or connected you can say to connect the hydraulic system 1 and 2 uh, so that the standby pump can be used to operate uh, the systems number 1 uh, systems. This is generally used only by the ground servicing crew to carry out their maintenance checks and uh, uh, and not as a routine by the pilots therefore uh, it is very important that the mechanical selector must be set to in flight position in flight mode prior to a flight this is very very important in the normal day to day operation the pilot will never have to touch this uh, mechanical selector at all so uh, each crew ought to be aware of this let us uh, get on to the uh, system uh, schematic diagram I have uh, drawn the schematic diagram of the uh, system. So I have hi uh, highlighted uh, or uh, left the hydraulic one system uh, here. The hydraulic system one is powered as you can see by two uh, pumps and uh, both these pumps even though they are operated by different engines engine one and engine two they draw fluid from the same tank this is very important for you to understand and of course the, the system operates uh, at 300 plus minus 200 uh, 3000 plus minus 200 psi the services operated are the normal services are slats normal and automatic mode brake one gears and doors uh, nose wheel steering and thrust uh, reverser engine one and uh, each of the control services servos of uh, and one barrel each is uh, uh, serviced by hydraulic system one so the schematic is very clear of course i want to draw attention to the positions of the accumulators about which we will be discussing a little bit more in detail the hydraulic uh, system two and of course there is a reservoir and uh, both the engine 2 pump and the standby pump draw fluid from this number 2 reservoir and that is what uh, I want you to uh, notice that and of course the services are air brakes, flaps, uh, brakes 2, emergency slats, parking brake and thrust reverse uh, uh, engine 2 which also have got accumulators the system also has got accumulator i want you to notice that the parking brake is located on system 2 therefore even uh, by operating the standby pump you should be able to charge the accumulator and build up pressure for the parking brake and of course each of the control surface uh, servos are being powered by hydraulic system 2 I like to draw your attention to the position of the and of the standby pump. Uh, I have uh, blown up that portion of that uh, the standby pump uh, 
see as you can see the standby pump selector is there and this is a selector which is uh, uh, which can be controlled from the rear uh, servicing panel uh, which has to be which is normally used by the ground crew to connect this hydraulic system uh, to to uh, number one so that the number one uh, can be powered by the standby pump to check some services on ground it is never used in uh, air so that's why here the standby pump selector is shown in the air position so number one side is isolated and uh, it's an electrical driven pump and it draws uh, fluid from the number two uh, reservoir we have been talking of very limited controls i will uh, just uh, take you to the overhead panel where those limited controls of the system are located as you can see the position this is the overhead panel and i have highlighted in an yellow square which of course has been uh, blown up you can see there is one uh, standby pump uh, which cycles between off and auto off on and auto position and when it is off of course the uh, lighting uh, light uh, yellow light will be uh, visible and this hydraulic two isolation valve also uh, is there about which we are going to uh, learn more in detail so these are the two primary controls uh, which are located in the over, uh, uh, overhead uh, panel which can be operated by the pilot now that we are at the overhead panel controls, uh, I have uh, blown up the hydraulic two isolation valve position, which is uh, also I have highlighted in the schematic diagrams. So it will be clear when we discuss the uh, function of hydraulic two isolation valve and its uh, working. It will be very clear. So I thought I uh, now that we are here, I must highlight the same. Okay, this uh, hydraulic two isolation valve is a very important uh, valve performing a very important function especially when there is some trouble with the number two system so uh, i must explain this in little bit more detail so you have to learn this uh, uh, for efficient handling of the system especially when some in uh, failure uh, scenarios when the selector switch is set to auto on ground or in flight with the slats extended the hydraulic isolation valve is controlled in the open position allowing the standby electrical pump to supply full hydraulic system too that means with the slats extended it supplies uh, on ground either or on ground in flight it supplies the full hydraulic system in flight with the slats retracted the valve uh, is normally closed only the pitch and rudder, uh, rudder servo actuators are powered by the uh, st uh, standby uh, pump why there is a reason to it when we are going to discuss this in our uh, normal and abnormal uh, situations because there is a provision for uh, slats to be uh, uh, retracted in an emergency mode and things like that so uh, at this position it's enough if you understand that uh, with the slats retracted in flight uh, only the pitch and rudder servos are being activated by the standby pump so there is a uh, you uh, there is a need so, uh, uh, then then several other actions are to be performed so as to utilize this number two pump for other uh, services Some more on uh, isolation valve uh, as I told you this push action uh, alternates to off and on position and uh, close it must be set to close in case of uh, number two system fluid leak obviously if there is a system leak then it's going to affect uh, uh, while operating the standby pumps it's going to leak out further fluid so it must be set to close position course if there is a pump failure number uh, the electrical system uh, electrical pump can be used with the number two pump failure uh, in the closed positions air brakes 
are not available this this we already discussed earlier and reasons will be clear once we go through the abnormal operations now, uh, the accumulators uh, uh, i have put a picture of a typical accumulator uh, which i am sure you are all familiar nevertheless there is one uh, there is one portion in which the uh, hydraulic uh, fluid is contained and there is a portion in which uh, compressed gas under high pressure is uh, retained with a uh, partition a diaphragm in between so each system includes a hydraulic accumulator to dampen the pressure surges in the system and provide the instantaneous uh, reserve power each system also includes an accumulator that supplies limited hydraulic pressure to the thrust reverser that means this uh, thrust reversers have got their own accumulator and of course the parking brake also has got its own accumulator and uh, the system uh, pressure system accumulators are all precharged for life and uh, the it's almost uh, the entire operation is automatic and there are no residual pressures the number 2 system includes one additional uh, accumulator to provide the uh, power uh, to parking brake as i told you uh, because we all know how important is parking brake and uh, how it is used in emergency situations as well after shutdown the uh, or after an hydraulic failure hydraulic pressure in each system accumulator will drop to zero obviously uh, but as i told you there is a check valve in the accumulator which is for parking brake and thrust reverser so it is able to retain uh, residual uh, uh, pressure so, uh, system diagram i have highlighted the, the, the locations of the accumulator of uh, various services uh, such as parking brake thrust reversers and the system accumulators and i want you to be familiar uh, with uh, with the locations and also Uh, there is a pressure gauge in the left hand wheel well uh, which indicates the parking brake accumulator pressure at all times so uh, the pilot can uh, have a uh, look uh, at this gauge during his walk around pre pre flight and post flight to check the pressure if it is indicating the system pressure or no of course if it has been operated then it will be low then he can take take corrective action by uh, charging it more uh, by operating the number 2 electrical pump okay uh, now the synoptic uh, hydraulic page the system page it's again uh, fairly simple if and it depicts the system very well Uh, anyway uh, let's go through the components one by one firstly the engine driven pumps uh, as i have shown the next is, is the standby pump as you can see it is uh, at, it is with the hydraulic system too and uh, as i told you uh, here the reservoir positions are not uh, shown but it draws fluid from the number 2 uh, tank uh thirdly the uh, let, let's go through the system hydraulic system 1 and the services operated by hydraulic system 1 which has been highlighted in this yellow uh, enclosure uh, correction white enclosure uh, as you can see all the services are uh, very well uh, clearly depicted and of course the uh, flight controls uh, pitch rudder and roll servo how they are connected also is well uh, well indicated the next is the hydraulic system 2 where uh, again the services are very clear air brakes flaps brakes to etc and all that uh, and the next is the isolation valve which we have uh, talked at, uh, about it at length uh, and it's very important as i told you especially in uh, emergency situations and of course the hydraulic uh, quantity uh, indicators uh, uh, the, uh, where it drops less than yellow uh, all that we are going to see in uh, 
uh, normal operations so uh, this is how it looks and it, if it is in green then it, it's fine in any case you would have carried out a pre-flight inspection and uh, it should be coherent uh, the picture would be coherent and uh, the positions of the accumulators are also shown uh, in this diagram of course the system accumulators are not shown and uh, the parking brake accumulator and the thrust reversers uh, accumulator positions are also shown and of course the brake temperature uh, uh, left and right side has also been uh, shown but I, I have not highlighted it uh, so this is the synoptic page of the hydraulic system it's very simple straightforward here we come to the end of the lesson uh, the hydraulic system fitted in falcon 2000 exec type of aircraft and it's a little bit of indications the synoptics and uh, the system diagram uh, we will be learning more uh, on the subject uh, in its normal and abnormal operations so things uh, will become more clear i hope this uh, uh, will uh, uh, form, form a base uh, before we go get on to the normal and abnormal operations i thank you all for going through the lesson patiently and uh, i'm sure you are going to find it interesting before your type rating or refreshing uh, some uh, uh, before you go for your refresher training thank you all please feel free to uh, uh, comment uh, uh, on on the email id below uh, and uh, please follow my lessons for uh, all the falcon systems uh, which we are going to uh, publish in due course of time thank you all